and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and today I am doing a review of Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. I have been rereading the books in anticipation of the last one being released at the end of October. Uh, I already did The Assassin's Blade which is the novella set. Uh, if you missed that I will link it in the description. But uh, there is a fan page I think it's called The World of Sarah J Maas. Um, I will leave the link in the description, but they are doing a read-along, and uh, the first two weeks were Assassin's Blade, next two weeks are Throne of Glass, and then so on until October when Kingdom, Ash, Kingdom of Ash comes out. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd read along and uh, get all excited for the new book, and then I thought since I'm going to be reading them, I might as well review them since I did talk about them in wrap-ups before, but I haven't actually reviewed them on my channel, so I thought I would do that. And yeah, we'll just get right into Throne of Glass today. So when I first started reading Sarah J Mass, I was very much into A Court of Thorns and Roses, Court of Mist and Fury, all of that, and my friend kept telling me, well, you should read her Throne of Glass series, you should read her Throne of Glass series, and I was like... I don't know, it doesn't really sound like something I'm interested in. But then after having read her other books and really liking them, I was like, you know what, I'll pick it up. And I, the first time I read this, didn't love it. I thought it was okay. I think it's still a pretty good YA story. Um, but it didn't grab me the way that A Court of Thorns and Roses or A Court of Mist and Fury did. So I was like, eh, it's okay. I didn't really like Selena as a character. I mentioned in my Assassin's Blade review that Assassin's Blade is what, me, what made me fall in love with Selena as a character because you get to see all of her background and why she is the way that she is and you kind of get to see, a, you get a deeper look into her character. And so I really like that. And rereading this series and starting with Assassin's Blade I think was a really good idea. Because by the time I got to this, I was less annoyed by Selena. She's still really arrogant and self-assured, and sometimes that confidence comes off as just, like I said, annoying. Uh, I, when I think it's supposed to kind of be badass, I don't really think that she comes off as badass all the time. Uh, so that was kind of something from the first time around when I read it that stuck this time around. But, like I said, after having read Assassin's Blade, I liked her a little bit more, understood her a little bit more, and so this time around, I wasn't as annoyed by her. Um, and I actually found her quite sympathetic at points. I also still really love Kale as a character. Um, I thought Dorian was actually kind of weak in this book. He gets to be a much better character in later books, but he almost feels a little, like, kind of just a placeholder for any kind of young adult hero love interest. And that was the other thing, reading it the first time around and then also reading it the second time around, there are a lot of young adult tropes that I don't like. Like there's a love triangle trope, I think it's unnecessary, um, I don't think it adds much to the story. Uh, there's She's kind of like the special one. There's this competition. It feels very much like Hunger Games, but there are like 24 competitors, and you only really know the names of like six of them. So when all these competitors are dying here and there, it's it it doesn't you don't have any impact from it. Uh, you don't feel like you don't feel any connection to them, so it doesn't mean as much other than it scares the main characters. There's also a lot of groundwork laid for the rest of the series and I was noticing that more this time around obviously because now I know what's coming I can kind of anticipate it I can look and say oh that that's gonna be relevant later um, so I liked that I liked being able to pick that out the friend character that I feel like in young adult usually there's like a friend character that's added that's really only supposed to add depth to the main character and that's kind of how I felt about Nahima, Nahimia, I, I forget how to pronounce her name. Um, but the first time around I read it, I was like, oh, she really is just there to like boost Selena's character. This time around, I noticed, no, she's actually like a fully developed character. And I think 
the first time around maybe I was just used to that trope and so that's what I was reading into it. This time around, like I said, I kind of noticed a little bit more of Nahima's background and, and she really did feel more like a, a well-developed character and so that was kind of something this time around that I went, oh, that is a little bit different and it's not exactly how I remembered it and she is more of a character so I liked that. I know that Saturday Mass wrote this first as like an online story um, and so I don't know how much of it she had written before it was published. I don't know if it was just the first book or if there was more uh, to the story but there's some stuff in here that knowing what comes at the later parts of the story I don't know that she had things fully formed in her mind because there are a couple things that happen and I kind of go knowing what we know in like the fourth and fifth book wouldn't somebody have had an issue with this at this point so there were a couple things like that that I kind of picked up and I went I wonder if she but they but they were also kind of vague enough that you could maybe get away with it so I don't know that she had the, the where the story was going fully formed by the time she was writing this um, and if she did, maybe that's a weak point in this, is that there are some spots where, like, things weren't fully developed, or they were contradictory to what happens later, uh, so there are a couple things like that, um, not big things, and not anything that would make me not enjoy the book, but just kind of like, oh, I just think, like, like, I think of, like, Harry Potter, and I think of some of the things that happen in the first couple books that really, really are relevant to things that happen in the seventh book. And even things that happen um, like in the in the fifth book that come up in the sixth and seventh book and you see that all these little clues were laid out and you know that J.K. Rowling had to have thought of those and how they were going to be important to the story overall. There are some things that I think are supposed to kind of feel like that in this, but maybe she didn't really know where she was going to go with like the magic system or where she was going to go with like some of the history. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe she did and there, like I said, maybe it's just a little bit of weak writing in the beginning here. Um, but yes, yeah, so overall I still enjoyed Throne of Glass. It's not my favorite. It wasn't my favorite when I read it the first, when I read the series the first time. Um, but I think that it's the best young adult book in the series. I do think that the series gets more mature later and I know a lot of people like the first couple of books and then they kind of fall off in like book three and four. I kind of, my theory about that is that I think book three and four really is where it becomes adult fantasy and maybe the introduction of more and more characters is overwhelming for people maybe the world building's a little too dense I don't know but it is I think there is a bit of a genre shift there um it bums me out a little bit because I think that I still think it's a really good fantasy series and I love the later the later books um but I can kind of see how if people really liked this book and really like the second book which I'm in the middle of right now how they might not like the third or fourth book. I'm the complete opposite. I kind of am not as big a fan of the first couple books, but I love the later books. And that's because, like I said, I think that it gets a little bit more fantasy heavy. It gets a little bit more adult in both its content and its writing style. So I'm really looking forward to rereading those books. I'm glad that I reread this because it was better the second time around. It's still not perfect. I can still see other people's complaints with it, um, but I also think that it's very much a young adult book and so I judge it a little bit differently than I judge the other books. I think that it's good for a younger audience. I think that it's a little tough because like with, and again I'm using Harry Potter as, as an example because I think the same thing happens in Harry Potter where the first couple of books are really kind of children's books and then like the fourth book comes around and there's a lot of adult content and you get more adult in the uh, things that happen and so it's hard when you have a series that's following characters that go from like one age to from like young adult age to adult age and 
then suddenly your audience kind of shifts um, because adults aren't necessarily going to want to read young adult and young adult audiences aren't necessarily going to want to read adult fantasy. Sometimes there's a crossover. I mean, hi, I read adult and young adult. I love it. Um, but so I can see how that's a little bit of a problem for this series because I think that this book really dra draws in a younger audience and maybe the adult audience wouldn't stick with the series after having read this because it feels a little young in its writing and its content. It's not necessarily a criticism, it's just an observation. So final thoughts on Throne of Glass. Uh, the main character was not as, uh, as annoying the second time around. She's still not my favorite. Uh, I still love Kale, I still like Dorian, although I feel like he's a little bit cardboard in this. Um, and I think it's a good young adult book. Uh, I think it's, there's not as much fantasy elements in, in this. Uh, you get that really more in the second book and then the third and, and so on. Uh, so I like the fantasy stuff, so I'm not as interested in all the stuff that happens in this book. I like the later books more. Um, but yeah, I, the second time around I read it, I still really liked it, and I still gave it 4 out of 5 stars. So that's it. Those are my thoughts on Throne of Glass. Like I said, if you missed my Assassin's Blade review, I will leave it linked in the description. I will also leave the link to the fan page in the description so that if you want to read along, you can do that. Uh, I still really like Sarah Damas's writing. I know that a lot of people are not her biggest fan. And, uh, but I think even having read this and having it feel a little bit younger, I still think the writing's really good. I still think that the character development is really good. So I like all of that. Um, I'm a Saturday Mass fan. So, yeah, if you like what you are seeing, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to see more. I do talk about books and movies on this channel. I don't do a ton of book reviews, but I do wrap-ups every month. Sometimes I might do an occasional tag video. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, like I said, subscribe. And comment down below on your thoughts on Throne of Glass or Assassin's Blade. And I'll see you next time.